Uh, this particular fly here is kind of my take on a Gypsy King. It's, it's pretty much a Gypsy King. The only difference is I like to kind of bind mine down here in the back. Um, the original pattern just has two thread wraps in the front half of the fly, so the foam is uh, up off the body. Uh, it's a great stone fly pattern. Um, it'll work for a variety of stone flies. You know, the nice thing about it is you just change the body color and the size. Um, so the platform itself is a really good one just to to work off of and it, it's a pretty easy tie even uh, for somebody who's learned how to uh, tie flies. So we're going to start this fly. It's 2x size 8 hopper hook. Uh, brown 8 dot thread. Just going to go ahead and bring this thread all the way back. Lay down our, our standard base of thread on the body of the hook so we got a secure platform to work off of. <clears throat> This fly is pretty, like I said, this fly is pretty simple to tie. Doesn't take a lot of materials. This is a good uh, dry fly. So, uh, <clears throat> first material we're going to tie in is just a piece of two millimeter uh, brown foam, and I've just cut uh, a long taper in the back end of it, which is going to go towards the back of the hook. So, we'll go ahead and just put that in here. And usually, when I tie a foam, I kind of take a couple of loose wraps to start with that way you don't cut through your foam and then you can kind of work it in work it down a little tighter as you go once it has a base to lay on get it kind of getting tight there you don't want to pull too much on it so you don't cut the foam or uh, break your thread the other option is to use a heavier thread uh, next material going into this fly is some of this uh, SLF squirrel uh, spiky dub. <clears throat> I pretty much just for the most part anymore use a lot of this for for the dry fly. And don't worry about the foam; you'll, you'll get it all locked down here. Since you get something for it to sit on, his main thing is just get it on the hook to start with. So uh, I'll go ahead and start right here, get a good wrap on that thread, cover that up, and then come underneath. Pull the foam back so you're not leaving any bare spaces. And I, I kind of tie this body <clears throat> like most of my flies for the most part, more on the sparse side. Uh, the foam is the silhouette, so really the the body side size doesn't need to you know outdo the silhouette. So. Anytime that you're tying these flies, you know, you want to keep proportions in mind. So I'm just going to go ahead and just work this dubbing forward here. We want to kind of keep it as uniform as possible, but it doesn't have to be over the top, copious amounts of dubbing. And like I said, you can always change this dubbing to you know, whatever stone fly that you're trying to imitate. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a second wrap here on this foam. Get it secured in here good. And kind of start to cinch it down good. So now you have your piece of foam that's secured in there and it's not going to twist on you anymore. You can always put a little glue on there too, just in case. Um, so next step. I'm going to go ahead and use a little all-natural deer hair for the wing of this fly. We're basically looking for this hair to come just about to the back of the hook for the wing on this. So, same deal. I'll take just a couple of loose wraps here, get everything where I want it, and then start to cinch down. If you want to fancy up your fly, you could add a little bit of flash underneath the wing prior to tying in the deer hair, kind of as a fir first step underneath the deer hair. I kind of seem to go back and forth. Sometimes I put the flash in, sometimes I don't. So we're just going to take and cut out as much of this deer hair as we can.
whatever's left you're gonna cover up anyway so it doesn't have to be perfect okay so next step fine brown rubber leg one on each side <clears throat> we come back in here with a little more of the same dubbing we use for the body. Like I like to leave an inch or two just kind of above the dubbing and then I'll knock out two steps at one time. I'll secure my hackle feather instead of making it you know, multiple step process, so. Take a few wraps with the hackle feather here. same thing we'll finish this fly kind of up underneath here last thing we'll do here is we'll kind of trim these legs up to size about an inch. Back ones I'll get, leave them a little longer, like an inch and a half, inch and a quarter, inch and a half. As long as they're even, and then I'll take my scissors and trim my phony foam even and take off these square corners. And that's it. Great little stonefly pattern, easy to tie and uh, super effective on the river.